Hello, YouTube Power Hour Squad. Erica here for another really exciting interview for you. So this is a case study of one of my students in the boot camp who went through the zero to influence system and transformed her YouTube channel. So Michelle Wong is my guest for today and she joined the boot camp at around 18,000 subscribers and she had a dream of quitting her full-time job and doing YouTube full time. So stay tuned to listen in as she grew her channel to almost 100,000 subscribers a year later. Super excited to have her on. And for those of you listening or watching, make sure you come on to YouTube so you can check it out and subscribe there. We do upload our interviews a day earlier on YouTube. Also, if the bootcamp that we talk about here in this interview is interesting or enticing for you, then make sure you get yourself on the waitlist, ericaviera.net forward slash bootcamp. Enjoy the interview. Well, hello, Michelle. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Hi, Erica. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I am so excited to have you, especially since you're one of my students in the boot camp. It's always, for me, like such a special thing to be able to showcase my students, show what they're doing, the amazing things that they're doing. It's just, I I love it. I, I My goal is to have as many boot campers on the show as possible once they reach like amazing milestones. So thank you, Michelle. Thank you for coming on here. So why don't we get started with you sharing uh, just the Cliff Notes version of your journey here on YouTube? Um, gosh, okay. So I started in, actually, I wrote this down because I always forget like my start date, but I yeah. started in May of 2016. And I, at the time, I was a hand knitwear designer. So I started my channel talking about knitting and yarn and designing and things like that. Because that um, totally has to do with makeup. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like, it's like completely related. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the reason why I had started my channel is because I had been watching a lot of um, makeup and beauty YouTube. And I thought, wow, you know, this looks like fun. I want to kind of, you know, get into this. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I knew at that time was makeup. Mm -hmm. And I had started, uh, I'm sorry, but was knitting. And um, I had started a makeup blog, completely inspired by uh, beauty YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was all kind of like mixed and jumbled in my head anyway. And because knitting is such a slow <laughs> slow art. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can just, you know, talk about things very quickly um, or, or, you know, show things very, very quickly. So I just kind of quickly realized it wasn't something that I felt like I could sustain. There's some um, of your older videos. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, and at that time, actually, I was going through a lot of changes in my personal life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, long story short, I ended up moving from New York City to Las Vegas, Nevada, at the end of 2016. And so once I moved here, um, I don't know, just like my perspective changed. And I decided in February of 2017 to just start making beauty and makeup related YouTube content. Okay. So that was about a year later, basically. Or yeah, almost a year less. later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I really wasn't putting up that much content uh, when I had initially started with the knitting stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I needed that separation. You know, I was doing knitting full time. And then for my hobby to be talking about knitting, it was too much. It was mm -hmm. too much. So I just wanted to kind of like separate things. And I thought, well, you know, I started watching YouTube because of beauty and makeup videos. I'm like, why not? Like, mm -hmm. why not just give it a shot? So mm -hmm. Got it. So then you change your niche in about a year later, um, mm -hmm. 2017. So then how was that going? How was that going with doing the beauty videos? Um, you know, it's a pretty steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. I think anyone out there who has started a YouTube channel would probably agree. But all of a sudden, you're, you have to figure out how you upload what everything means, your thumbnail, actually doing the video recording, actually doing the editing. It's like all of a sudden with just one video, it was like, oh my God, I have to be like, you know, video production, <laughs> video editing, like everything, sound engineer, uh, lighting. Yeah. Um, and so it was just, it was just a really interesting, interesting time. I just got really, really 
enthralled with the whole process. I had always been into photography, so there were some skills that I could kind of translate into videography. Um, and I'd always, you know, I had worked in tech before I had done knitwear design. So I, you know, I was really into gadgets and like, you know, researching what kind of cameras people were using, what kind of lighting people were using, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. So I just got really into like the production of, of YouTube videos. And so I was just kind of, you know, like in this beauty space and there's, you know, I never really have a problem coming up with content because there's so much to talk about. I feel like between new releases and all the different brands and, you know, you can talk about makeup and skincare and hair and nails. I mean, it's just, it's so broad that I didn't, you know, it was like at that time I, I didn't niche down, which, mm -hmm. you know, is something that I definitely learned in your boot camp. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just kind of focusing on the production of hmm. the actual video at that time and just kind of putting out, you know, like whatever content I felt like. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And you know what? It does take time. Like it does. That's like part of the process is just figuring yes. all that stuff out. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, lighting. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's another thing. I feel like if you've been on YouTube at all, it's like lighting is such a struggle. It mm -hmm. is such a struggle because unless you're sitting in a windowless basement, it is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of things that you'll hear other YouTube uh, creators will tell people who are thinking about starting YouTube is like, oh, just start, just start. And yeah. I totally agree, you know, just mm -hmm. get on the platform and just start. Um, but I think especially if you're talking about makeup and especially if you want to do demos or tutorials or show products, you really have to have good lighting. It's one of those things that unfortunately, if you're doing beauty and I'm sure there's other things, fashion or whatever, you have to have good lighting. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, it was critical. I felt like that I learned about lighting pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, people have come to expect, <clears throat> people have come to expect that, you know, back in the old days, I think it was more forgiving, but in this day and age with the production value of so many of the big YouTuber, beauty YouTubers being so high, um, people yeah. come to expect it. You know, that's, that's kind of par for the course. You gotta, if you're going to talk about beauty, you gotta be able to show it. Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, well, since we have it on, on the topic and then we'll kind of go into your journey a little bit later, what are your best lighting tips? Like what are some of the things that you learned and have progressed over time when it came to the lighting? Um, <laughs> I hate to say this, but you get what you pay for, um, when it comes to, I think when it comes to equipment. So I had gone through. I, I can't even tell you how many different little lights, soft boxes, thing, mm -hmm. you know, kits that I had purchased off of Amazon that cost, I don't know, maybe somewhere between two and $500, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. And I would keep trying it. Um, some were just not great quality, just in the fact like it wouldn't sit on the tripod. Mm -hmm. Nicely, you know, just things yeah. like, and so it kind of like fall in the middle, like while I was filming. Yeah. And, um, and those were okay. You know, those were fine. I could get by with those. But as soon I started to tuck money away, and as soon as I could afford um, the big Kino Flow Diva lights, which is mm -hmm. what I'm sitting in front of right now, I just went out and I got one. And it's the only light I use now. And I, it's like the best money I have spent on equipment. It's by called far. the Kino Flow? Kino Flow. K I N O dash F L O. Okay, and I will link it in the description and everything for people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, what what is it? Is it like a panel or is it? Because um, I know they like have a, their ring light, but is what what is a Kino Flow? So Kino Flow is um, it's like they have different sizes, mm -hmm. so you can get I think twenty five inch, thirty inch, forty inch. I mean, they get really really wide. I have a thirty inch, so that's how wide it is, and then it's just like a flat panel I have mm -hmm. like fabric on top like a diffuser in front of it so mm -hmm. that it softens the light a little bit mm -hmm. but it gives off the most even light mm -hmm. it's not especially the brightest but it's even mm -hmm. so if you get like you know like a fairly inexpensive soft box on mm -hmm. uh, Amazon or whatever the light is so harsh you know and you'll see it it's just like bing and it's yeah. you can't do anything about it it's not 
this like diffused even light and that's mm-hmm. what this kind of lighting gives you and that's all you have is just that that it's panel? just that oh. yeah which makes it a lot easier to set up i think yeah but you know the one issue though is that this light is so big and it's mm-hmm. so heavy you have mm-hmm. to have a dedicated filming space for it because it's not something you want to take down and put up so i just have it up all the all time all the time Got it. Yeah. And then what about cameras? Did you find that made a difference when it came to the quality or was it more about the lighting? I think it's more about the lighting. Mm -hmm. Um, I love my camera. It was, that was a whole nother journey. I probably went through four or five different cameras. Mm -hmm. Um, But this camera, the one that I use is the Canon C100 Mm -hmm. uh, Mark II. And it's total overkill. I mean, I will tell you, (laughs) it's like complete overkill. Mm -hmm. Um, But there were specific things that I wanted. Um, Most YouTubers use a DSLR, like a a, a photography camera Mm -hmm. that has video capabilities. They'll use that and use the video. And you'll probably notice in a lot of beauty YouTube videos that at about, you know, halfway through the video, they'll say something like, oh, my camera just shut off. You know, I don't, you know, yes, you know, I'm starting, you know, I'm picking up where I left off. Um, and that's because DSLRs aren't made for video. So what they'll do is they'll only create a certain file size. So when you're recording, it'll just stop recording after like 20 minutes. Yeah. It just won't keep going. And that made me nuts because I had, I was trying to film off of like a regular camera. And if you're doing a demo, you can't, you can't just have the camera shut off. So I was like, I want a video camera, like a camera that's actually made for video. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just had some other things that I, I wanted something that I could plug in that mm-hmm. I didn't depend on a battery because that was another issue. So this just seemed to fit what I needed. Yeah. But first to admit that it's complete, it's total overkill. Total overkill from really what you need. Yeah. But it's almost like trying to find something in the middle, right? Something that's like not super pro camera because you're not going to be, you're, you're not running all over town with it or whatever and yeah. doing all these productions. But at the same time, you still, it's like you still need those things specifically like you talked about yeah. so and interesting um and you do have a dedicated filming space like a, a room area i do mm-hmm. i do and i feel like if i didn't um i wouldn't be able to film as often as i do mm-hmm. how, how many uh, how many videos do you do a week um it depends my goal is five but sometimes because i like to talk about new releases so sometimes it ends up being like seven or six. I just want to get like videos out for stuff. So oh my God. I, sh- I shoot for five, uh, five wow. videos and one live stream. Wow. Uh, that's, yeah. that's crazy. So how, how, how long have you been uploading that frequently? Um, well, just this past June, mm-hmm. I left my full-time job to try and do YouTube full-time. Oh, congrats. Uh, so thanks. Thank that's you. Amazing. Uh, so it's like when I was home, I would be putting it up at that pace, but I traveled a lot for my job. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I traveled, you know, I wouldn't have anything up. So it was, it was inconsistent in that regard. But when mm-hmm. I was home, I felt like I was being pretty consistent. So I want to say since about June, it's been consistent. That, that frequently. And that, I'm so glad to hear that. I mean, that's always my goal with my students is like, I want to get them to a point where they can be doing YouTube full time because most of the time the people that join my program, my course, like they want to be full time YouTubers. So I'm so excited to hear that. Congratulations. That's exciting. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go back to uh, when you know, you had, d- you had started your your beauty channel um, in 2017. And then mm-hmm. you were doing beauty and all that. And then about a year later, um, I believe it's when you join the boot camp, right? 2018? 2018 towards the end, right? So maybe like a year and a half. Yeah, it was um it was August of 2018. Yeah. That's when yeah. we we did it that year. Um so tell me about the circumstances surrounding that. Like where were you at when you joined? What made you decide to, you know, want to um invest in the boot camp and join it and all that? Um I think there were a couple things going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, I was getting a little burnt out with what I was doing, my full-time job. Um, and at the same time, even though I was doing YouTube on the side, all of a sudden my income was starting to grow. And so, you know, I could kind of see firsthand like the um, the potential mm. that YouTube have. I, you know, I mean, you see YouTubers all the time and 
and they're doing really, really well. But it's like another thing to see it firsthand, like, oh, wow, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, I could, this could actually be something. Um, and so you get a little I, taste of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought, well, why not? Why not try and take it a little bit more seriously, get it to the next level? And um, I know Jen from Jen Loves Reviews, mm-hmm. and she had mentioned um, your podcast mm-hmm. and had mentioned uh, your boot camp, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So I looked into it, and I and it was, you know, it was like serendipitous because I think the minute I looked into it was when you opened up enrollment. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. And I thought, well, that's a sign. So I signed mm-hmm. up, and yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell me, um, tell me about. I think when you signed up, you were around. We had talked about this before. Around eighteen, nineteen thousand subscribers, mm-hmm. um, and so now you're at almost eighty thousand. Which, oh my god, I'm so excited for you. That's <laughs> freaking amazing. Um, and so, what you know, what were some of the things that you took away from the boot camp um, that you kind of directly applied to your channel? Um. You know, this is so obvious, Mm -hmm. but it's some, I don't know, I guess I'm just, I can be very thick headed, (laughs) but the the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thumbnail is so, so important. And I think, I think most people know that. I think Mm -hmm. most people know that on one hand, and then on the other hand, put absolutely no effort into it. Yeah. Myself included. It's like, I know how important that thumbnail is, but by the time you're done editing, you've filled in that description box, you know, you're like sweating from the lights. Like the last thing you want to deal with is a thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Um, But I finally was like, oh my God, like I really have to kick it up a notch because it's like, it's as important as like a wine bottle label or the cover Mm -hmm. of a book. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, it's the first thing people see. So mm-hmm. uh, that was, I think, the biggest takeaway. I, so It really sounds so stupid, but I think that was the biggest takeaway. Yeah. Um, we talk a lot about thumbnails in the boot camp. Yeah. <laughs> like almost, I don't want to say like too much, but I'm like, I feel like I'm like thumbnails, like you guys with your thumbnails. So Yeah. Yeah. Like, and again, especially because we're doing makeup and beauty mm-hmm. or whatever, it's, you know, it has to be, it has to be right. It has to be mm-hmm. clear. It, yeah. 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 That that's awesome. I'm glad that you I'm glad that that was something that you changed because um yeah, yeah that will that will kill you if you're not if you're if you're really not understanding like what you need to do on your thumbnail to make people want to click. Um mm-hmm. what else was there anything else? Um there was uh the I, the first class that you do is finding your why. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And that was huge, huge for me. And you talk about how it's huge. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's funny. I've had so many different careers and I've done so many different things. And for me to sit down and have to find the common thread between all of that, what? well, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. And it has, like, dictated almost every decision I've made for my channel. And anytime I'm like... I don't know, should I, if I go back to my why, the answer is clear. Mm -hmm. Um, And so anyone that takes your bootcamp, I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. And I think when I took your class, there were uh, a couple people in there who were taking it for the second or the third time Mm -hmm. because they just hadn't been able to kind of like figure out their why. And I just thought that was amazing that they were still trying and, and going for it and still trying to figure it out because not that you can't move forward, but you won't, you won't move forward smoothly mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll say, without why. Yeah. Um, so that was huge too. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because that is one of those lessons that if, you know, and, and someone like yourself, like you were, you already, you already had, you know, a smaller ish, but established audience. And, um, you know, at around, you know, 18, 19,000 subscribers. And I tell people like, cause I've had people around that size or even larger who've joined and they're like, okay, I just kind of want to get into like, I want to get to like the SEO stuff, you know, and the thumbnails and all that. And I always tell people like, I specifically have designed the program, like that no matter what size you're at. And honestly, some of those earlier lessons are more beneficial for people that have been on YouTube for a while that have an established audience. Because if they're joining, then they're at a point where they want to take things to the next level. And it's so important to go back to that and I'm so glad that you took you took that lesson seriously and most of my students do because it comes at the beginning too so they're all gung-ho and I was like okay and I like throw this at them and it's like the biggest like lesson and people are like 
I'm crying here. I did it. Like crying from like, you know, emotional things and all that because, you know, my philosophy from YouTube, it is a little bit different than some of the other things out there. And I, everything out there is amazing. Like there's so many amazing programs, but I do find that mine is really based on building your YouTube channel from the inside out because I truly believe and not just believe, it's from what I have learn from working with so so many women and also interviewing so many am amazing successful women as well is that you cannot like what you said you cannot I mean you can probably get so far but like for most of the people that are attracted to my program my course like they want to make a YouTube career like exactly what you've done like they want yeah. this to be their career they want to be a YouTube influencer they want to be um doing this like this is what they want to do and yeah. so it's not just a job for people it's like truly like a life's purpose mm -hmm. and um it's truly I always say too it's like it's a legacy that you're leaving behind like this is this is it this is what you're going to be doing and so yeah. you got to get deep with that and and like you mentioned earlier like the why serves of a as a filter to every single decision that you make in yeah. the future. Yeah. So I know that's a pretty hefty lesson. I think that, I don't know how long that workbook is. I think it's like 50 pages, <laughs> um, maybe <laughs> less, maybe less, but that why would, and that's why I always tell people, okay, you know, a lot, and that's why a lot of people will go back to it and go back to it. And like, it's like, it's always being refined. It's always being perfected. And I know, I mean, it sounds like for you, did you get your why right away in that first week? Did you? No. Yeah. No, I actually didn't get it until after the boot camp. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you had us like share what it was like mm -hmm. in the Facebook group or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I kept typing one in and then like editing it and then typing one in and then editing it. And yeah. I was like, okay, no, I need to like sit with this a little bit more and really, you really have to dig deep. You really have to dig deep because it's it's not it's not just why you're doing YouTube like right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's something much deeper. And you know, like I said, it was like I had to find that common thread between everything that I've done and what I enjoyed out of everything, what got me out of bed, in all of those different jobs that I had. You know. Yeah. 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 And I had somebody in the Facebook group just the other day, she was writing it out and she was talking about how that, that lesson was one of her most favorite lessons because it helped kind of bring connection to her YouTube and like why she's doing it. But she's like, also I'm finding it's helping me in like my whole life. Like it's just brought awareness to certain things and what I'm doing. Like in, in my, you know, she's, she's a doctor, so she has that career as well, but she's like everything that I do, I actually now think back to that why, cause it's literally, cause I have a why formula. I have like a whole thing set up in there. And, um, it's, it's really interesting the, the effect and power that it's had for so many of the women that have gone through it. Mm hmm yeah, mm -hmm. that's really, yeah. that's cool. Um, thanks for sharing that. And then the other thing you mentioned earlier is that your niche. So did you, because I know that's a big thing we talk about in the boot camp also. So did did you change your niche or, or refine it when you went through the boot camp? Um, I, I had just basically refined it before the boot camp, mm -hmm. but your boot camp sort of kind of gave me the, confidence to be like, okay, like this, this was like the right thing to do. Mm. Um, because I had been talking about, because again, like I felt like in the beginning, I was so into just like the actual YouTube Production. video, I wasn't mm -hmm. focused that much on the content. So I was just talking about makeup in general and just, you know, the stuff that everyone else was talking about and, you know, stuff that interested me when I walked into Sephora. And mm -hmm. then I realized quickly that what I liked to talk about and what I was interested in was like just the, the luxury beauty segment. And I was a little bit hesitant about making that my niche because you see so little of it on YouTube. Um, and so at first I was, that was kind of a deterrent for me. And then I realized, well, this is a hole that I should fill or at least, you know, join the few that are on there talking about luxury beauty. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's, I started to kind of really hone in on that and that's all I talk about now. Um, and yeah, and then taking your boot camp, it was like, okay, you know, I like, I, I niche down and like, I'm in my lane, I've picked a lane and I'm going to like stay in it. Yeah. And so do you feel that that decision to kind of narrow things and have a narrow focus, um, has that helped you with the growth of your channel? For sure. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Because people know, they know what to expect from me. They know, uh, why they come to my channel. Um, and that's how you get subscribers. I think if you're 
kind of all over the place. You, you may get a lot of views, but I don't know if you're going to get the people that are like, oh, I want to subscribe. You know, I want to like be notified every time this person uploads a video. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's I mean, it's it's big. They, yeah, they know what to expect. I mean, four or five videos a week. I mean, that's I, I'm curious what your schedule is like. And now you do YouTube full time. So yeah. that's great. This is all you're doing. So what is what's your schedule like in doing you know those videos? Um, I, I kind of work all the time. Um, <laughs> You're like, I'm just, always working. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, when I left my, my full-time job in June, I thought, great, this is going to be my opportunity to just focus on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'll work Monday through Friday. You know, I'll have a normal life. I'll work Monday through Friday. I'll have Saturday and Sunday off. Like it's going to be great. And that worked for maybe two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, everything was just too tight. My schedule was just too tight. Like anything happened, a video would be missed if I wanted Saturday and Sunday off. So in, instead of cutting back on my video upload, I just thought to myself, you know what? I enjoy working. I really like working. I have the luxury of being able to do it all the time if I want to. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to work all the time as, you know, so long as I still enjoy it or whatever. And when I want to take a vacation, I'll take a vacation. I'll take like that week off or whatever. But when I'm home, I'm just going to work all the time. So, um, so yeah. And you know, my goal for like my everyday schedule is I like to do like three things and the things would include filming or editing. So I'm either filming two videos and editing one or filming one, editing two or filming three or editing three. But I feel like I can squeeze in like three things a day. Mm. So that's what I that's what I aim for. The rule of three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so you you do everything yourself. You don't. I do. You don't outsource anything. OK. I don't. I would love to outsource editing, but um, because one of my favorite videos to do is uh, reviews of new releases, I just, I don't have the time. Because you, like, so, okay, so let's, so when you get a new release, um, like, what's the turnaround time between getting that and uploading a video? Um, so, <laughs> so my YouTube friends make fun of me, but it, let's say there's a new release. I will run to the mall when it opens, so, like, at 10 a.m. Okay. Um, I'll get the pieces. I'll rush home. I'll film like a first impressions. I'll edit and I'll upload. So I'll have it up by like three or four that afternoon. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're hardcore. Do they know? They must know you at the mall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like my bar. Like I'll hang out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, oh, she's back. You know, yeah. hey, Michelle, the usual. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's funny. Um, yeah, you got to be on top of it then. It's like that's your life. Yeah. That's yeah. That, yeah. Um, okay. So when you quit your job, what was the determining factor at that point? Like why in that moment when you quit that it was the right time? You know, it's so, it's funny because, um, I really believe in the law of attraction and I know you've talked about this. Yes. And we do a lot of woo woo, um, stuff in the boot camp Cause I, it's like, <laughs> It's funny. It's like we. It's like there's a little bit of everything. Well, there's a lot yeah. of bit of, of of a lot of different things. But it's your mindset is so 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 important with YouTube. It's like so. It's everything. So important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I love about the law of attraction, um, and I'll get back to why I left my job. Um, but the one thing I love about the law of attraction is even if you don't believe in it, let's say, even if you're like, this is just ridiculous. You know, it's too like hippie for me. What I love is that everything starts with gratitude. And I'm like, what could be wrong with that? You know, like yeah, even right? if it doesn't quote unquote work, work. I'm just a happier person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's all about appreciating what you have. So true. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, you know, it's funny. I, I was starting to get burnt out with what I was doing and, um, you know, and like I mentioned, my YouTube income was starting to grow. It was starting, I was starting to see its potential. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really thinking about it. I'm like, is this like, is this my path? You know, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And I got onto a FaceTime call with a really good friend of mine. And she's, uh, she's actually a life coach. And she's known me for a long time. So she has seen me through like many different careers. 
And I was really kind of going through the struggle, like, oh, like, am I going to sit here and change my career again? Like, is this what I'm actually doing? And she was like, yeah, maybe that's your thing. And so we were just kind of talking through it. And as I'm talking to her, I get an email from my company saying that they have sold the ownership to mm. uh, some other people. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a small, small company. And much of why I worked there was because I loved the people that, that I worked for company. and with. And that was all of that was changing. And so I'm on the call with my friend and I said, you're not going to believe <laughs> the email that I just got. And she said, what? And I told her and she was like, Michelle, that she's like, I have never seen a stronger sign. It is time for you to say goodbye to that and move on to this. You know, you, you were questioning the job and the only reason why you were kind of staying there is because you loved the people so much and that's changing. So, yeah, that was pretty much the determining factor why I left. That's so funny. Um, it's like, you know, at this point, I've interviewed so many different people on this podcast. And I feel like for a lot of the people that were in your position, they were working a job and then kind of there for a little while. They were like, you know, managing the two. It was a lot of times like outside circumstances, which forced them to look internally and say, Do you know what, this is kind of forcing me to make this decision. And I'm yeah. just going to go for it. And like for some, it's like if that thing hadn't have happened, that catalyst, then mm -hmm. they might, you know, who knows how long, how much longer, like who knows how much longer you might still be working your job. Yeah. You know? Yeah, totally. totally. Um, and so were you, so for an income wise, was it, is it just AdSense that you are generating income or are you doing sponsorships and working with brands or doing any other type of monetization? Uh, for me, it's mostly affiliate. Uh, oh, affiliate, that's right, affiliates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah and then some, some AdSense. Mm -hmm. And um, I had talked a long while ago when I was much smaller. I was like, I, you know, I'm not doing sponsorships at the moment. I don't know if that's going to change. And a lot of it is just because, I, not that I don't believe in sponsorships. I think they're amazing, and I think YouTubers should just go for it for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but for me, it was like, I just, because I had, you know, was still working full time, I couldn't like manage it all because there's, you know, there's communication, there's coordination or whatever. And I thought, oh, I'm just doing YouTube because I like it. And I just want to get videos up and out there and I don't want to have to deal with this like external party. Um, and so just recently I took my first sponsorship, hmm. uh, which was great, but I had that. I had that feeling again where I was like, you know, I'm on YouTube because I just want to put out what I want to put out when I want to put out. And they were the best. They didn't tell me what to say. I mean, nothing mm -hmm. like that. Um, so it was the best case scenario. And I still didn't feel like it was right for me. So mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, I, you know, I never say never. I think that may have been my one and only sponsorship. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. We'll you see. tested it out. Yeah. yeah. I just, yeah. I just don't know if it's for me. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That's, that's the thing. Like it, it just, you got to go with what resonates with you, what feels good to you because the second something doesn't, then it, it's affected on your, like a cha your channel, like it affects your mood. It affects your, your thoughts. And then that yeah. then translates on camera. And then that, that messes everything up. Yeah. People yeah. sense it. So, um, okay. So affiliate. So do you, work with specific companies and get um, different like promo codes or is it really just you go through one of the big companies like Magic Links or Reward Style or like what do you do for affiliates? Um, I go through Reward Style mm -hmm. uh, mainly. Um, Magic Links, I started out on Magic Links mm -hmm. but then I kind of moved over to Reward Style um, and uh, oh gosh, what's it called? There's a third one I use. Share a sale. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Share a sale. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so okay. those are the three biggies that okay. I use. Got it. And what percentage of your YouTube income now would you say is affiliates versus AdSense? Because it seems like those are the main two for you, right? Yeah, those are the only two. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say God, it fluctuates so much month to month. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say on average, AdSense is like 25% and affiliate is like 75 Yeah. Percent. Yeah. That's the thing. That's why it's, it is so important to um, have multiple 
income sources when you're on YouTube and not just rely on AdSense because it's really not that much in the grand scheme of things. Really not. Yeah, it's really not that much. And it does, um, it really does fluctuate. Sorry, let me turn this off. It really does um, fluctuate mm -hmm. and um, not even your views, but I've seen like, even if my views are fairly consistent, just from month to month, yeah. some months are just more worthy. Um, yeah. than other months, it's, yeah, it's just, it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, okay, you, you quit your job, it was kind of like, forced, forced upon you, but you made that decision, sounds like it was, a, you were happy with that decision. And no. then how did, you talked a little bit about it earlier, but was there anything else that you changed in that moment when you when you quit your job, it sounds like you started um, uploading more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, was there uh, anything else? No. Sorry, I'm like, did anything else change? No. No. Really? Not really. Mm -mm. So, okay, so then let me ask you something else. So then you, okay, because I know when you, because I've been tracked, you know, we've been, um, I've known you kind of kept in contact and, looking at what you're doing like since the boot camp and you were at 18 or 19,000 then, which was a little over a year ago. Um, and now you're at 80,000. So obviously like something clicked or happened with on your channel. Was there any type of video? Cause for some people it's like a viral video that goes viral or is it just been really consistent growth or what's kind of been your kind of push to gain so many subscribers within that, that, that year? It has been just a very consistent growth. Mm -hmm. I've had, you know, a couple shout outs from bigger YouTubers um, that, you know, like for a day, I'll have like a little bit of a jump yeah. in like subscribers, um, but nothing, you know, nothing major. I haven't had like a video go viral or anything, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's just been um, like a, not, I shouldn't say slow, but you know, it's just been a consistent growth and um, you know, I, again, for any kind of aspiring YouTubers out there, I cannot emphasize enough consistency. Mm -hmm. I think that has been really important for my channel. Um, just putting up, just sticking with whatever schedule it is that you set, like come hell or high water. If you want three videos up a week, then put up three videos a week. Um, you know, your viewers really start to depend on it and, um, you, it's almost like you gain a reputation for it, you know, like, oh, this YouTuber's consistent, you know, and it's, people love that. People, mm -hmm. people really, really love that. So yeah, that's another, you know, tip, I would say it's just, it's so important. And again, it's like, you hear that from, you know, YouTube channels that just help other YouTubers or whatever, like, that's probably the biggest piece of advice or the, the piece of advice I hear most often is mm -hmm. consistency, mm -hmm. consistency. But it's like the thumbnail. It's like you know it, but sometimes you're like, oh, I don't feel like filming. Yeah. It's like, no, like get it up there, film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah do it. And so do you upload um, at the same time on certain specific days? Like do people know like, okay, Tuesday's at, you know, 5 o'clock and Wednesday's at this time or whatever. Do you have that or is it just you, you're always uploading, you know, I mean you upload a lot four or five times a week and it's just like whenever you get it up. Um, it's, again, like if it's a new release – like all bets are off. I'll just put it up. Sometimes I'll end up putting like two videos up that day because mm -hmm. you know, it'll just go up. Um, but generally what I like to do is put something up Thursday through Tuesday mm -hmm. and I schedule it to go live at four forty-five AM. I don't know why I picked that time, mm -hmm. but I'll schedule it to go up in the mornings. Um, I've gotten a lot of comments like, Oh, love watching you while I'm drinking my coffee, getting ready, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I st I'll stuck with that. And then, I'll try and have Wednesdays and Thursdays free and I'll live stream on one of those days. Got it. It's so funny because that's the exact same time that I upload my podcast, 4.45 oh, a.m. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> which is so funny. Um, and part of that is because uh, people on the East Coast, they like to know that in their morning commute that morning, they can, mm -hmm. um, you know, they can listen to the podcast or while they're getting ready. So. Um, that's funny. I have that same time too. <laughs> yeah, I think it's four forty-five. That's funny. Um, but okay, so then you talk about high. What? So what would you say your niche specifically is? Uh, luxury makeup. Luxury makeup. Okay. And so with luxury makeup, I know that 
you are do you rely on uh, PR packages to be able to kind of get all this makeup because you're uploading a lot or are you out there buying all that makeup? Um, I probably started getting PR when I hit like 60, 65,000 subs. Mm -hmm. So it's not been a long time. Um, and I'm just starting to get PR from, you know, brands that I talk about okay. um, regularly. Uh, but no, up until then I've been buying everything. <laughs> buying everything myself. I mean, that, that, yeah. that gets expensive. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, you know, again, I think I'm, I'm a little bit older, I think than the average YouTuber. And so I've had a little bit more. And how work. are you open to say how old you are? I'm 46. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. So like a little, maybe a little bit older. I feel yeah. like there's yeah. more and more, but you know, in, in general, in general, um, but there are more and more. There's a lot more women yeah. coming on, you know, in their 40s and their 50s. I've, I've interviewed a few of them for this this season of the podcast, and yeah. they're killing it. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. It's great. It's great to see. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, but in general, I think we're still on the older side, mm -hmm. um, and there's still fewer of us. Anyway, um, so I have, you know, quite a bit of work experience, life experience, or whatever, and so I have always had – like a side hustle. I think that's what the kids call it, like a mm -hmm. side hustle. Yeah. And um, so I, I've always kind of kept that money kind of separate. And so it's, I've either put it towards like continuing education type things, like your boot camp. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put it towards just hobbies, like whatever it is that I'm doing on the side. Um, and a lot of those things have brought me money. So it's like, you know, I've had this little fund for these like side hustles growing and growing and so I've been able to kind of put it into this YouTube channel mm. uh, which is which is great but you know it's something you really have to plan for especially especially if you want to be a luxury beauty channel that focuses on new releases yeah that's a lot, you know that's a lot of stuff that you want to buy if you want to be a makeup channel and you do commentary mm -hmm. uh, you know you do anti hauls you do will I buy it or whatever no you don't need to buy a lot of makeup so you can budget accordingly but if you want to do makeup reviews you have to budget for a lot of new purchases yeah you do I mean especially your your kind of channel so you're saying that you have like another side hustle that takes care of this or pay for this? Or, no, oh. this, this was my side this hustle. This was your side hustle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was working, you know, full time and all my full time money I could spend on makeup. Yeah. And so yeah. anything I was making off of YouTube was kind of going into this fund. Mm -hmm. uh, and before that, when I was working in tech, my knitting was my side hustle. So, you yeah. know, it's just been, it's been this like revolving door for me. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do now? So you just invest some of the money that you make into basically back into the business, which is purchasing product. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but it, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a constant, I mean, hopefully the PR helps to offset that as you're getting more and more, but. Hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but you know, I get another tip for anyone who's aspiring to be a YouTuber out there. It's you treat it like a business. You know, I, I, there's been a lot of talk, um, lately in the makeup community about how it's just, it's overwhelming, you know, all the new releases, it's overwhelming to be spending all of your money on this, on new stuff. If you want to be talking about new releases and then unfortunately a lot of these uh, YouTubers will get into like credit card debt, like. And I just think to myself, um, you know, having run businesses, having gone to business school, I'm like, credit card debt is like the worst way to fund your business, which mm -hmm. is essentially what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I talked about that on my channel. I'm like, don't. People are like, oh, I don't have any money, but for the sale, I guess I'll charge it. I'm like, don't charge it. You know, yeah. like, never <clears throat> charge <laughs> yeah. for me. Just, it's not smart. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. I just yeah. to mention that. No, and it's like, and you know what? And pick a niche that makes sense then. Like, don't, don't, don't talk about luxury, high end beauty if it's going to really like affect you in that way. Cause ultimately it's going to affect your, your, your whole, the whole thing, your whole mindset. You're going to be nervous about things and it's just not going to work well on, on your channel. So, um, so yeah. yeah. 
And like you said, you could, if you really love makeup, focus on other things. And I and this is a discussion I have all the time with my students in the boot camp too because some people are like, it's expensive. It's like, well, okay, there's certain things that you can do around it, you know. I have somebody who like, um, she reviews uh, foundations for acne skin and it's like, well, you know, you can get samples from Sephora. You don't have to buy every single foundation, you know. So true, mm -hmm. yeah. Get get samples and you know work do that. You can even reach out to companies for samples. Like, hey, yeah. I have a channel. I'm going to talk about acne. Can I try this? Can I try that? And you would be surprised at what you can can get if you're proactive and you reach out directly to companies. I mean, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have a I have a whole. It's a free guide, and I'll, I'll link it below. It's like all about how to get onto PR lists, and it's like. And then I, you know, I, I always say your focus shouldn't be on getting onto PR list, but the reality is if you are talking about makeup and you're really passionate about it and you really want to do it and like you say, but you know, it's like, it's hard for me to pay, pay for the products. Like there's, you, you could definitely be resourceful. You can reach out to companies. You can, you know, you can go to Sephora, you can get samples. You can, th there's things that you can do that are resourceful and if you really have to do it. For sure, and no, your your ultimate goal shouldn't be to get on a PR list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like one aspect uh, of you know running your channel, um, but I, I think um, reaching out should definitely be done, especially by the smaller YouTubers, because it's impossible for these social media managers to keep on top of every single channel out there. And they, it's like you're handing them some research, like mm -hmm. check out my channel, I think we're a good fit or whatever. They, they love that and you never know, you never yeah. know. I know some friends now who have, um, I don't know, 10 or 12,000 subscribers, they've reached out to a handful of companies mm -hmm. and now they're getting some stuff. So yeah, you never know. Yeah, but it all comes down to creating really good content to, you know, all the things that, you know, we've talked about here, where I've talked about in the boot camp. It's like really setting yourself up so that even though you're at 5,000 subscribers, even though you're at 10,000 or even whatever, five or six, 7,000 subscribers, your channel looks like it really should have 100,000 subscribers you're like that committed you're consistent mm -hmm. like you've said you're it looks good you're you know you're the best version of yourself on camera so that by the time a brand looks at you they're like okay we're gonna we're gonna invest in this in this youtuber they look like they they're up and coming they look like they have a future you know we'll we'll send them product and it yeah. makes sense this is their niche this is what they're talking about it's not just willy-nilly i'm gonna like throw a huge net see what, what i can catch it's like okay this is what i talk about this is my demographic this is who my audience is they're, they're this age or, or what whatever it is yeah. yeah have have you reached out to brands personally um i have, have I? <laughs> 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 um i don't think i have mm -hmm. i don't think i have um, only because I just, and it was, it's my mistake. I felt like I was just going to get shot down. So like why mm -hmm. bother? Mm -hmm. Um, but what I did start doing, which I never did before, this was another really stupid oversight on my part was I started tagging them on Instagram. Oh, so yeah. I would announce that, you know, I had a new video up and I would just announce the new video. And then eventually I started tagging the companies. Like if I did a favorites, I would tag all of them, you know, all the companies that I mentioned. Um, and that, that's kind of like a passive way of like mm -hmm. contacting them or letting them know that you're interested in their product. Um, so I started doing that and that has actually opened up a few doors. I'll get some DMS on Instagram. I'm like, Oh, love your channel. Can we send you some things? Um, so that's worked well for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I have not actually emailed. Yeah. Um, I've actually taken my own advice and emailed companies. I should. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, at this point you probably, I mean, maybe you don't have to, you probably, you, you know, now they probably know who you are. And that act of just tagging them, like they will pay attention. Like especially if they click over to your video and they're like, oh, 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 look at her. Oh, wow. Wow, look at these comments. Look at these likes. Look at, oh, this is, look at these views. Okay, this is, she's got a good audience. They're engaged. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, they're impressed. It's kind of like that first impression. They click over and they, oh, yeah, no, she should definitely be getting our stuff, you know. Um, it's a quick decision. These, like you said, these PR managers are dealing with so many different creators, so many different people. They are tasked with the job of finding people to send product to, finding the right people, finding the people that have the audience, right? Yeah. So if you are focusing on gen cre generating content that creates that audience, that creates that community, then yeah. when you do what you do, when you're tagging them, like you don't have to be spending hours emailing and reaching out because 
you've already done all that work in the sense that you have this community. So then you just tag them and they're like, oh yeah, no, no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So now we're nearing the end of the interview. So I'm going to ask you some of the same questions I asked everybody. I call this the power hour, not power hour segment or whatever. I need to come up with a better name for it, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. Um, what has been the best opportunity you received as a result of your YouTube channel? opportunities that come to mind are things like collabs and things like that. I haven't gotten um, any of that. Let me think. Maybe, well, I was actually just asked to do some, I don't think I can talk about it yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a very, a wonderful company just asked me to curate something for the holiday season. So I'm very mm. excited for that. Oh, that's exciting. I mean, I would even say quitting your job is an amazing opportunity. That's true. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just opened up a whole new world. Yeah. And you're doing, doing what you, you love, you know, every day, you know, you're able to, yeah. to bang out those hours and those videos, uh, cause you yeah. love it. Um, what, what is, uh, any mistakes? Is there a big mistake that you've made on your channel looking back that you would have done differently? Um, I think, think you know I don't <laughs> feel like I'm harping on this whole thumbnail thing but yeah. I think I really would have paid attention to those much uh much sooner um and just you know and again it's like I don't I don't want to sound you know discouraging to anyone who doesn't have the equipment but I can't I can't emphasize enough things like lighting and your microphone when I go back to my older videos, when I just, I wasn't using an external mic, I was just using whatever was on the camera and thinking that was fine. Now, when I go back and listen to those, I'm like, how does anyone even understand me? Like, yeah, that... you go back and you see the difference. Yeah. Um, so equipment, you know, decent equipment is, is really important. I wish I had invested in that sooner as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, with the beauty industry and beauty community, I think the bar is set a little bit higher for all these things. Um, and I think yeah. you can't really get away with as much having a beauty yeah. channel because there are so many out there. And it's not to say you can't succeed. I mean, look at you. You've grown tremendously in the last year having a beauty channel, right? Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, like you said, these little – these things like – they seem little, but like, you know, having that right equipment real def will definitely like kind of separate you from the pack and just allow you to focus on what you're really doing, which is talking about the makeup, showing the makeup without letting anything get in the way. Yeah. And that's actually a really good point because when you take your footage um, off and you upload it into your editing software, I would sit there in the beginning when I had really bad lighting, trying to correct the lighting and the exposure. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much you can do, especially with video, you know, with photo editing, it's much easier. And it was like, I, I would spend hours and try different software and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, if I just had the right lights, I wouldn't have to like deal with this. So yeah. And, and it really took away from the actual content and me actually editing <laughs> the video. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, what are you most proud of when it comes to your YouTube channel? Um, I think my consistency that my, um, consistent uploading. Yeah, definitely. Um, what is the best decision you made with your YouTube channel? Um, maybe there's two, I think leaving my full-time job and focusing on it, mm -hmm. um, you know, fully. Um, and I think niching down, mm -hmm. um, I was definitely a little bit hesitant about focusing on luxury beauty. Um, but I was like, I need to niche down. Um, there's just too many people talking about everything out there. I needed to differentiate myself. And it's, it's what I liked. It's what I felt most passionate about. So it made sense. So yeah. Why were you so nervous on, on niching down to that? Um, because I think you get a lot of flack talking about things that are expensive um, mm. on YouTube. You get a lot of judgment. Um, a lot of people have very interesting relationships with money. Um, so yeah, so it was like, but you know what? I'm like, I like it. There's gotta be other people out there who like it. And you know, I think there are. Um, and 
you know, since then I've gotten, when I first really started to focus on it, I did get a lot of comments like, very judgmental comments. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll leave it at that. And then as like, it became very clear that this is what my channel is about. I just started to attract people looking for that kind of content. Yeah. And so I've gotten a lot of comments like, thank you so much for talking about this stuff. No one ever talks about such and such brand or such and such product. Um, and thank you very much. So um, yeah, it's just, it's really worked out well. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Like, how did you deal with that negativity that you received after you made that decision? Um, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. Okay. I, you know, I, again, I think this is, it comes with age and experience. I have a pretty thick skin at this point. Like, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Like, go right ahead. I, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I try, you know, I'm human though. And some, sometimes comments will get to me, but they don't, they don't last long. You know, again, it's like, I go back to that law of attraction stuff and I, and I think about gratitude and I focus on all the positive comments. Like out of the 300 positive comments, I'm sitting here thinking about this one comment. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, you know, I just really try and like focus on all the good that's going on. Yeah, that's great. Um, and then last question, what is your YouTube superpower? So what is it about you that comes really naturally to you that you think has contributed to your success on YouTube? Um, maybe... Maybe uh, presentation. I used to, when I worked in technology for a period of time, I was a trainer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and being a hand network designer, I did a lot of talks and classes and, you know, keynote speaks and, you know, things like that. Um, so I think uh, presenting and kind of pu public speaking, it's, this is very weird <laughs> what we do, yeah. you know, speaking in front of a camera, but you are kind of public speaking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess that, that would be my um, superpower. Not that I'm super comfortable in front of a camera, but I do feel like I know how to present information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is an important part of the job. That's what you're doing. So yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, such a pleasure, you know, having you here and you sharing your story and your journey with everybody. For people that are not familiar with you, what's the best way that they can find you? Uh, Michelle Wong on YouTube or the Michelle Wong on Instagram. Yeah. Amazing. Those two. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you. you, Michelle. And for those of you guys listening and watching, um, you know, come over to YouTube and comment. Comment. Let us know what you took away from this interview with Michelle. Um, what did you learn? Anything that inspired you? What do you think about her quitting her job? Um, you know, niching down, connecting with her why, like she did in the boot camp. Like what? Anything that she said, kind of maybe inspired you to do something. Um, let us know in the comments below. And also, um, I do have a free masterclass where I talk about a lot of the things that we go through in the boot camp and uh, my zero to influence system, which is a big part of the boot camp. And if you kind of want to get a taste of that and check it out and, and learn some of these things, go to ericaviera.net forward slash masterclass. All right, Michelle, thank you so, so much. It was awesome thank having you. you on the show. Thank you so much. Bye.